Good evening, YouTube, Booktube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video because my wife is gone this evening. The house is quiet. My wife is uh, babysitting some children for a couple in her church so they could have a date night. Gotta keep the marriages strong. You gotta keep open the communication, the love. So, um, we need strong families, strong marriages in these last days of the American Empire. It is 541 in the evening here in West Michigan. It is October, nope, <laughs> it's November the 10th, 2020. It is a Tuesday night. And I, th I mentioned in my recent videos, I was getting books in the mail and last night they all came at one time. Uh, the the mailman delivered four Patrick, Patrick, four boxes, Patrick, Patrick, Patrickus, a Patrick, a pass, you know, I can't pronounce the word, Patrickus, you get a Patrick, a patch, package, a package, Patrickus, anyway, in the, one of the boxes was these, I, I t told you I had, re I had, I got an email from Library of America that they were selling the journals of Ralph Waldo Emerson 50% uh, off. So I got them for $20 a volume. And as you all know that Ralph Waldo Emerson, the Transcendentalist, Margaret Fuller, Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, Henry Thoreau, that whole... Uh, literary movement, philosophical movement uh, in early uh, 19th century America it is something I has always been fascinated with, especially Emerson. One of my favorite books is Emerson's Essays and Lectures in the Library of America series. I also recommend these two biographies on Waldo. Uh, <laughs> just forgot his name. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson. This one, Waldo Emerson, a biography by Gay, Gay Wilson Allen. And my favorite biography on Emerson is Emerson, A Mind on Fire by Richard, no, Robert D. Richardson Jr. I highly recommend these two biographies. Check out Emerson's journals. This is selected journals from 1820 to 1850, 1842, 1820 to 1842 selected journals. And this one is selected journals, 1841 to 1877. Uh, as I was looking through here, there was a, a photo of his journals, if I can find that photo. But he kept a journal that starts when he was 16 years old. There's a picture of Henry Thoreau, his friend. When uh, Emerson was on lecture tours, Thoreau would be with Emerson's wife and children and be there watching over them, helping around the house like a handyman. Close friends, Emerson and Thoreau. Yeah, I can't find it. What's that? Oh, here's a picture of his his journals, Emerson's journals. So, I got that for my Emerson Wal Ralph Waldo Waldo Emerson collection, and I got this mail. I got this book in the mail. It's a biography. I came across her when I was reading. Uh, another book, which I don't have on the table now, but she was uh, involved in the Bloomsbury Group, Virginia Woolf, Leonard Woolf, uh, Duncan Grant, Robert Fry, that whole literary group, and her name was Odeline, Otto, Odeline Mor Morel, Life on the Grand Scale. 
a biography by Miranda Sigmore. I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong, but she was in that circle and and I like reading about that time period of literary life in England before the First World War. She also wrote this book I have in our library, A Ring of Conspirators, Henry James and His Literary Circle, 1895 to 1940, 1915. As you all know, I'm a, I have a huge Henry James collection, his novels, his short stories, his biographies, anything on Henry James. Portrait of a Woman, uh, Portrait of a Lady is one of my favorite novels by, written by Henry James. A, a number of years ago, I went through a period where that's all I read was Henry James, The, the Golden Bowl, and Washington Square, and The Bostons, and it just goes on and on. And I also got in the mail this book, The First 100 Years of Christianity by Udell Chanel, translated by James W. Thompson. Uh, I have in my main library, I, my main study I have is two other books, Theology of the New Testament by, by Udell Chanel, translated by M. Eugene Boring, and I also have his book, The Apostle Paul, His Life and Theology by Udell Chanel, translated by M. Gen Eugene Boring, translator. I highly recommend his writings. Now, I don't know, how, I, I have not come across anything that I would disagree with, but I'm not saying that he could be not as conservative as some would like. That I don't know. I just enjoy his writings and find him thought-provoking and instructive. And it gets me at reading the New Testament, reading the the Pauline theology. And I wanted to read on the first 100 years of Christianity. So, and I also have had this book by him, The Human Condition Anthropology. And the teachings of Jesus, Paul, and John by Udell Chanel. So I really like his writings. Now, he might be not as conservative, but I, I don't know. I haven't come across anything. Now, it could be me and my lack of discernment or not paying attention to what I'm reading, but I've always enjoyed his writings. And then I got volume two last night in the mail of Reformed Systematic Theology, Man and Christ by Joel R. Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. I've showed you volume one of Reformed Systematic Theology, Revelation and God by Joel, Joel R. Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. So this is a four volume, it's a projected four volume work. And each volume is like this, volume one is 1,280 pages. And the new volume just came out is 1,360 pages. So you have over almost 3,000 pages of experimental reformed dogmatics, theology. And one thing about Beeky's systematics, he writes not only for the intellect, intellect but the heart. He always applies the doctrine and how is it to live out in a God-fearing, holy life. And that's what all systematic theology should do. It should lead to living a God-like life, imitating Christ and a greater manifestation of the character of God and of Christ. So I got those in the mail. I got Reformed Systematic Theology in the mail, Man and Christ uh, by Joe R. Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. I got in the mail yesterday, yesterday evening, the first 100 years of Christianity, Introduction to its History, Literature and Development by Udell Chanel. And then I got in the mail, the journals of R Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
As you all know, I keep a diary. I'm a journal keeper. I have online diaries. I keep a diary. I have it right here with me for November 2020. I ended on page 1088 for the year 2020. I already have for tomorrow morning. I'll start on November the 11th, 2020. And I got in the mail, what else I got in the mail? I got this biography on this woman who was involved in the Bloomsbury Group Literary Circle of Virginia Woolf and Leonard Woolf and Vanessa Bell and Leighton Stackley and people like that. I can't pronounce her name. Odeline Morrell, The Life on the Grand Scale by Miranda Sigmore. So... That's what I got in the mail yesterday. My wife is involved in a, she has two women's book club that she's involved in. And she went to the local library to pick up books for her book club. And as I told you, the, our, our local library has a used book little section, a little, I don't know what that thing is. It's a, I don't know what you call it. It's a little thing. They stack books. It has like four or five little racks of books. She picked me up two books. She picked me up The American Brutus, John Wilkes Booth, and The Lincoln Conspiracies by Michael W. Kaufman. This is from uh, my Abraham Lincoln collection, American History collection. It was only two dollars and it, it hasn't been read and it's in perfect condition. So I told my wife, she called me up on the cell phone and asked me if I wanted it. And I said, sure. So I got this. And then she picked up at the library, used book little shelf thing. The Avenger Takes His Place, Andrew Johnson and the 45 Days That Changed the Nation. This is what took place after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. This is by Rich Howard Means. So I got this for my Abraham Lincoln American history. So that's what uh, the books have been flowing into the Hermit Hut as we are in the last days of the American Empire. I just thought I'd show you these things. They're stacking up in the my to be read pile. Now I'll keep these by me in the living room, Emerson's journals, because I really enjoy reading him. Also, I've been reading, I have been reading in the mornings for morning worship, Christ's Prayer Before His Passion, Expository Sermons on John 17 by Anthony Burgess. This is volume one. I ended on, I'm on sermon 33, and in these two volumes are 145 sermons. <laughs> But I'm really enjoying this. It's very rich, very devotional, very convicting, very searching. Uh, I highly recommend his this two-volume work. If you're into 17th century English Puritan theology and spirituality, you can't go, re go wrong reading Ber Anthony Burgess. I really highly recommend him. I also highly recommend for devotions is reading Reformed Systematic Theology by Dr. Beeky and Paul Smalley. Pick, if you're gonna buy any kind of systematics for devotions, I recommend these. And I look forward to the next two volumes that are coming out, volume three and volume four. And you can't go wrong reading Chanel, The First 100 Years of Christianity, Introduction to Its History, Literature and Development by Udell Chanel and reading his Theology of the New Testament by Udell Chanel. And if you want to really study one of the major f in Christianity, besides the Lord Jesus Christ and Moses and Abraham is the Apostle Paul. So read the Apostle Paul, his life and theology by Udell Chanel. Now the reason when you read these, it's good to be reading over and over the New Testament, reading over and over the Pauline epistles. Not just reading the books, but looking up the verses, reading them, me meditating upon them, praying, asking questions, searching, read other books too. So I just thought I'd just show you these books. 
that I got in the mail last night. They all came at one time. So yeah, so I hope you're having a good week. This is only Tuesday. We got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Sunday we go into the middle of the month, coming to the end, the last part of November, going in December. So yeah, so I hope you're having a good week. I thank you for the comments and do pray that you don't have COVID. I know there's a surge that's sweeping throughout the country and the world. And there's chaos in the White House, the White House and there's death in the streets and there's global warming and there's threat of American Civil War. But hey, Jesus is on the throne. He's ruling the heavens and the earth and he is sovereign. I was thinking about that when you talk about a Psalm, just Psalm 110 came to my mind. I thought I'd just read that in closing. It says in Psalm 110, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I make thy enemies my footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the, whole, the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever at the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through the kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook and the way. Therefore, all, therefore shall he lift up. He, therefore shall he lift up the head. So it says here. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So right now the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand and he's coming again and he will destroy his enemies and the righteous will enter into the heavenly city of Jerusalem and forever dwell in the new creation. So I will close once again. Thank you for the comments and the new subscribers. Have a good night. Bye.